All right, so today we are going to be taking a deep dive into Elon Musk's XAI and their latest AI model, Grok 3. You know, you've probably seen the headlines oh, yeah. saying it's the world's smartest AI. I've seen those. But we wanted to cut through the hype and figure out what is really going on. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to be going through this episode of the AI Insight Podcast, which is all about Grok 3. And cutting through the hype, right? Exactly, yeah. Is this thing for real or is it just smoke and mirrors? Well, that's what we are going to be talking about today. So uh, let's yeah. jump right in. Right, right. So one of the things that really stood out to me is that they're not just claiming this is like a little bit better. They're claiming this is like a total... A paradigm shift. Yeah, paradigm shift in the way AI works. That's a big claim. It is a very big claim. So what are some of the things that make Grok 3 so different? They talk in this podcast episode about this custom-built data center in Memphis. Have you heard about this? Uh, yeah, I read a little bit about that. It's pretty wild, right? It's insane. 200,000 GPUs mm -hmm. all hooked up together to power this one AI model. That's 10 times the computational power of its predecessor, Grok 2. So what does that actually mean, though? Like, what does that much power actually enable it to do? Right, because it's one thing to just have a bunch of computer power, but it's another thing to actually put it to use. Put it to use, right. So, well, they claim that's enabling it to do things that no other AI can do. Right. They're talking about how it's just crushing all these benchmarks and math and science and even coding. Yeah, I saw that. Which is impressive. It is. But to me, what was really interesting was when they started talking about this chain of thought reasoning. I don't know if you got that part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, they're saying that most AI models just kind of take an input and they spit out an output. But Grok 3 is actually simulating the step-by-step -step thought processes that humans use to solve problems. So it's not just like crunching numbers. It's actually like thinking through problems. Yeah, that's the idea. Like we do. Like we do. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know about you, but that's a little... Yeah. That's kind of freaky, right? It's a little freaky. A little bit. But it's also really, really interesting. It is. Because it's like we're getting closer and closer to this idea of like truly intelligent machines. Yeah. I mean, if they can actually simulate human thought, then that is a huge leap forward. Huge leap forward. No, AI, right. And then on top of that, they talked about this thing called deep search, which is basically like Google on steroids. Okay. I'm intrigued. It's like Grok 3 can sift through like mountains of data, not just looking for keywords, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it can actually understand the meaning of the information and find connections that we might never even see. So it's not just finding information, it's actually understanding it. It's understanding it. Yeah. And how it all fits together. And then on top of that, yeah. it has this like built-in self-correction mechanism. What does that mean? Where it actually evaluates its own findings to make sure they're accurate and logically consistent. So it's like double checking its work. Double checking its work. To make sure it's not making things up. Exactly. No. It's wild. So so it can think like us, it can search better than anything we have right now. What else can it do? Well, that's what we are going to find out. Okay. But before we move on to that, I want to touch on this whole idea of Grok 3 being a truth-seeking AI. Because Elon Musk has been really emphasizing that aspect of it. Right. He keeps saying that. He keeps saying it. And it's really interesting because it raises all these questions about what does truth even mean in the context of artificial intelligence? Yeah, especially because right now the only people that actually have access to Grok 3 are people who are paying for it. Right. So it's like premium hmm. subscribers on X or people who are paying for this super Grok subscription. So there is this like layer of exclusivity around it. Yeah, it's kind of like a walled garden right now. Yeah, it's a walled garden. But here's where things get really interesting. They're actually planning to open source Grok 2, the model that came before Grok 3. Really? Once they've stabilized Grok 3. Okay, so they're going to let everyone see how the previous model worked? Exactly. So people can actually see what's going on under the hood. And nailed on top of it. Ah, interesting. Which is a huge deal. It is. Because it means that they're not just trying to keep this technology locked away. They actually want to, like, foster innovation and collaboration in the AI field. Yeah, that is pretty surprising considering how secretive they've been about everything else. Right. But I guess it makes sense that they really want to push AI forward. So Okay, we've got this super-powered AI that thinks like we do. Redefine search. And is being made available to researchers worldwide. Yeah. But what does this all actually mean for us? Man, that's the big question, right? The everyday users. Mm. Is this going to change our lives or is this just a bunch of fancy tech jargon? Well, that is the question that we are going to be exploring in the next part of our deep dive. Ooh, a cliffhanger.
We'll look at the potential impact of Grok 3 on different industries. Yeah. And even on our daily lives. All right. So make sure you tune in for part two of this deep dive into Grok 3, where we'll be talking about all that and more. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So we spent the last part talking about how powerful and fast this Grok 3 is. Yeah. It's definitely got the brains. And how it can even like think kind of like us right with that whole chain of thought thing well where does all that power actually get put to use right because it's one thing to be able to solve a math problem really fast but how does that actually translate to solving like real world problems that's the big question right? that's the big question yeah. so this podcast episode we've been looking at goes into a few potential applications and they're pretty wild okay i'm ready hit me okay so first up Healthcare. Healthcare. All right. They're saying Grok 3 could have a massive impact on how we diagnose and treat diseases. Like how so? Well, imagine being able to analyze a patient's entire medical history, their genetic data, their current symptoms, all in like seconds. Wow. That would be incredible. Right. It's like personalized medicine on a whole other level. Yeah. That's way beyond anything we can do right now. It could lead to faster and more accurate diagnoses. Oh, absolutely. And that's just the beginning. What else? They're also talking about personalized treatment plans based on an individual's unique genetic makeup. So like tailored treatments for each person. Exactly. And even accelerating the development of new drugs and therapies. So Grok3 is like a doctor in the making. Kind of, yeah. But it doesn't stop there. Okay, what else? They also talked about finance and economics. Finance, right. Could Grok3 predict market trends? I mean, that's the holy grail for a lot of investors. Right. So <laughs> think about it. Grok3 has access to real-time financial data from around the world, and it can process that information incredibly fast. So it can see patterns that we might miss? Exactly. And potentially predict how markets are gonna move. It's not just about picking stocks. Right. It's about understanding the complex interplay of global markets. Okay, so grok 3 has got healthcare and finance covered. What about something a little more creative? Well, they actually did mention that too. Really? They talked about things like composing music, writing novels, even directing movies. Could an AI actually be creative? That's the question, right? <laughs> but think about it this way. Grok 3 can analyze vast libraries of music, literature, and film. It can understand the elements that make these works successful. Like the narrative structure. The emotional impact, all of that. So it's not just copying what's come before. It's actually learning the underlying principles of creativity. And then applying them in new ways. Like having a master class in creativity at your fingertips. Exactly. That's pretty mind-blowing. It is. And it gets even more mind-blowing when you start thinking about the everyday impact of all this. Right. Because it's one thing to talk about these big picture applications, but how will this AI touch our lives on a personal level? Right. Because could Grok3 become our personal assistant, our tutor, even a companion? I mean, those are all possibilities, right? Imagine having access to an AI that can answer any question you have. Provide personalized learning experiences. Offer support and companionship. It's like having a super intelligent friend who's always available. Always there to help you out or just chat. Wow. It could change how we learn, how we work, even how we interact with each other. It's a lot to take in. It is. But I think it's important to remember that even with all its capabilities, Grok3 is still a tool. Right. It's up to us to decide how we use it. And that brings us to some of the bigger questions surrounding this technology. The ethical considerations. The potential risks, all of that. Mm -hmm. So as we head into the final part of our deep dive, let's explore some of those key takeaways and what Grok3 might mean for the future. All right, so we've really gone deep into this Grok3. Yeah, we've covered a lot of ground. From that insane data center they built in Memphis. 200,000 GPUs, it's crazy. To how it could like revolutionize healthcare. Personalized medicine. Predicting the stock market. Even composing music. It's a lot to wrap your head around. It is, and I think sometimes when we talk about all these potential applications, we kind of lose sight of what makes Grok3 so unique. Right, the underlying technology. Yeah, like let's take a step back and just recap what makes this thing tick. Okay, yeah, good idea. So first and foremost, that computational power. Yeah, that's the foundation of it all, isn't it? 200,000 GPUs. 10 times more powerful than Grok2. It's mind-boggling. And they're using all that power to do some pretty amazing things. Like that chain of thought reasoning. Right. Most AIs just spit out answers. But Grok3 actually breaks problems down step by step. Like a human would. Yeah. 
which allows it to solve much more complex tasks. And then you've got Deep Search, which is like Google, but on a whole other level. It's not just finding information, it's understanding it. And making connections that we might never see. And then to top it all off, it has that self-correction mechanism. Double-checking its work. Making sure its answers are accurate and consistent. It's really striving for that accuracy, which I think is really interesting. Yeah, especially when you consider that whole truth-seeking AI thing. Right, because that's what Elon Musk keeps calling it. And that raises some big questions, doesn't it? Yeah, like what does truth even mean for an AI? And who gets to decide what that truth is? Those are questions we're going to have to grapple with as AI keeps getting more powerful. Because whether Grok 3 lives up to all the hype or not, it's definitely a sign of things to come. Yeah, AI is evolving fast. And it's going to impact all of us. So I think the big takeaway here is that we need to start thinking critically about AI. How we develop it. How we use it. And how we make sure it's used ethically. Because it has the potential to do a lot of good. But it also has the potential to be misused. So it's up to us to shape the future of AI. To make sure it benefits humanity. Well said. So that wraps up our deep dive into Grok 3. It's a complex topic. It's a lot of implications. But hopefully this has given you a better understanding of what it is. And what it might mean for the future. And if you want to learn more, be sure to check out that AI Insight podcast episode. We'll link to it in the show notes. Thanks for listening.